Good evening. Good evening. And welcome to St. Pius X Church for the Eucharistic celebration on the Feast of St. Pius X, our patron saint of our parish. A special welcome to Bishop McKnight, who is celebrating Mass this evening. Please turn off your cell phones if you haven't already. Please stand and greet your neighbor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it is a joy for me to be present with you as you celebrate your parish, as we celebrate the feast day of St. Pius X, your patron, as we acknowledge the importance of the gift of the Church to us individually and together. We are mindful of the many ways that God continues to be present in our community. So let us encourage within our own hearts at this time and in this celebration of the Eucharist a sense of gratitude for all that God has blessed us with this parish. And let us also at this time as we prepare ourselves for the celebration of the sacrifice of the Mass, we acknowledge the times that we have failed to be true witnesses and evangelizers of our Catholic faith in our community. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord.
Let us pray. O God, who to safeguard the Catholic faith and to restore our things in Christ, filled Pope, Pope St. Pius X with heavenly wisdom and apostolic fortitude, graciously grant that following his teaching and example, we may gain an eternal prize. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve the gods your father served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord, our God, who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of the state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Live on. 
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we drew courage through our God to speak to you the gospel of God with much struggle. Our exhortation was not from delusion or impure motives, nor did it work through deception. But as we were ju judged worthy by God to be entrusted with the gospel, that is how we speak, not as trying to please men, but rather God, who judges our hearts. Nor indeed did we ever appear with flattering speech, as you know, or with the pretext for greed. God is witness, nor did we seek praise from men, either from you or from others. Although we were able to impose our weight as apostles of Christ, rather we were gentle among you as a nursing mother cares for her children. With such affection for you, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well. So dearly beloved had you become to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my father. As a result of this, Many of disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced 
that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the historic occasion of the 150th anniversary plus one year (laughs) of the Catholic community in Randolph County. In 1870, Father Francis McKenna and his assistant, Father William O'Shea, which I presume neither of them had any German blood in him at all, (laughs) especially with that window right over there, They arrived in the railroad-centered community known as Magic City to serve 12 Catholic families, the original 12 tribes of your parish. In 1875, the first church in Randolph County was built under the title of St. John the Baptist. The first Catholic school and first four-year high school in Moberly, St. Mary's Academy, began in 1877 and was staffed by the Sisters of Loretto from Kentucky to educate the girls of the community. And shortly after, St. John's School was built for boys. And then in 1912, the two schools were joined and renamed Loretto Academy. In 1888, A second church with a school building was built here in Moberly to serve the German Catholics under the title of the Immaculate Conception. Father Francis Straubinger was named the first pastor of that parish. In 1911, Moberly became a part of what was then the new Diocese of St. Joseph, which covered the north central portion of Missouri. And in the following year, The pastoral care of the parish was given to the Benedictine monks of Conception Abbey, and a new St. John's Church was built opposite the Immaculate Conception Church. The interior of this new church was destroyed by a fire in January of 1946, which was then reconstructed. Then in 1955, it was announced that the two Catholic communities of Moberly would be joined together, and Monsignor John C. Mahoney became the first pastor of the newly formed parish, which was then given the name of St. Pius X. It is one of the earliest titles for a parish in the name of the recently canonized Pope, who took his motto, Restore all things in Christ. It is interesting to note that the decree of extinctive union for the two former parishes stated this, circumstances which required the two churches have long since ceased to exist. Your parish went from a community split by culture to one united in faith. In July of 1956, the Diocese of Jefferson City came into being, and in September of that same year, a new combined grade and junior high school was built to serve all the Catholic students in and around Moberly. Then in 1987, another fire destroyed the church, but on Palm Sunday, 1988, Bishop McAuliffe blessed the completely restored edifice. And if that was not enough, in July of 1995, a tornado struck the parish, severely damaging the church, the school, the rectory, and the convent, and destroyed the parish center and office. Once again, the parish pulled together and rebuilt what had been lost. And the history of St. Pius X Catholic Church continues to this day. 
I am struck by how often your parish, in its long history, experienced cycles of various adverse conditions and disasters, some man-made and others from Mother Nature, but only to overcome them with faith, hope, and charity. Every era, every generation has its own challenges, and yet the mission of the church continues here in Randolph County because of the blood, sweat, tears, and shouts of joy of the clergy and the faithful. It is vital to understand the importance of the mission of the parish in this place and in our time to proclaim the kingdom of God in word and in deed. Your parish community is a living, breathing center of charity and mercy, which stands as a beautiful reminder of the presence of God among us. I have informed your new pastor, Father Joby, of the beautiful things you have going on here with the sacrifices you are making as a parish for the education of your children and in service to marginalized in the community. And I would note especially the Moberly Correctional Center. Only a vibrant, trusting faith can make all this happen. Our scripture readings on this day providentially speak to us of the importance or even necessity of accepting with faith the difficult things in the Christian life. From our first reading, we heard proclaimed, Joshua addressed all the people, if it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods of your fathers served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Every time you gather for the sacrifice of the Mass, every time you give of your time, talent, and treasure in support of the mission of your parish, you are saying along with Joshua, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. In today's gospel passage from the Eucharistic discourse in John's gospel, Jesus had just given a beautiful, unexpected, and in many ways inexplicable teaching that everyone found hard to understand. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you do not have life within you. And in today's passage, we see that many of Jesus' own followers found it just too hard to accept, and they returned to their former way of life and no longer followed him. You and I know, with the benefit of our catechism and centuries of reflection and understanding by our pastors and theologians, what our Lord meant. This passage serves as one of the most solid biblical foundations for the Catholic teaching of the Eucharist as the sacrament of the body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know that Jesus did not intend cannibalism, but that he had in mind how he would continue to nourish us with his very self through the sacraments until the end of time. This hard teaching of Jesus was, in fact, life-giving to all who could accept it. But notice how St. Peter spoke for all who remained with the Lord, even after receiving the difficult teaching. Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. We should take the time to ponder what teachings we find difficult today in our context. The teachings of the church that we cannot understand. And how do we respond 
to these difficult teachings? Are we like the disciples of Jesus who ended up returning to their former way of life because they could not put it all together themselves? Or do we respond like Joshua and with St. Peter, who certainly didn't have a complete understanding of what the Lord meant at the time, but made an act of faith in his person nonetheless? In essence, St. Peter said, I don't know how to make sense of what you just said, but I believe in you. We, as members of the Catholic Church, believe in and trust in our risen Lord. And it is this kind of faith which can carry us through times of doubt, discouragement, difficulty, sacrifice, and adversity. No matter the human catastrophe, no matter how desperate things seem to be, we can still choose to be a people of faith, hope, and charity. There is no amount of poverty, no depth of despair, and no lack of understanding that forces us to give up on our belief in Jesus. We shall serve the Lord. My dear people of St. Pius X Parish, continue to renew all things in Christ by forming your youth in the ways of faith, by serving as a center of charity and mercy to all who are in need, and by lifting up your sacrifice of praise in fervent prayer and devotion, especially by celebrating the Eucharist with adequate preparation, care, and devotion. As we observe this moment in the life of your parish, do not forget the active providence of God, clearly evident in your history, which tells of your humble beginnings of 12 families worshiping in a log cabin. Be not afraid to trust in God and his providence, especially in times of difficulty, for you have a future full of hope. Let us give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, who is all ages, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, begotten of my name, consecrated to the law of God, through the Secure in God's desire for our happiness and well-being, let us offer up our prayers for our neighbors, ourselves, and the whole world. For priests and religious, may the Spirit shield them and strengthen them for the building of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to all war, and for those who work to secure peace among nations and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from May Christ, the divine physician, bring them complete healing and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who offer their time and talent in our faith community. May the Lord bless them and encourage them in their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
especially Marvin Goldwyn, Charles Teddy Dyer, and Richard Desmond. May they soon come to rest in the everlasting peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The intentions of this Mass, which are for the repose of the soul of Maureen Kino. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us also offer up in prayer those who are suffering in Haiti and in Afghanistan in this time of trial. For them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the of all His holy Receive with kindness our oblations, and grant, O Lord, we pray, that following the teachings of Pope St. Pius, we may celebrate these divine mysteries with sincere reverence, and receive them in a spirit of faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us 
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for as on the festival of St. Pius X, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the working, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you. By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving 
this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Pius X, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at the passing from his life, give kind of greetings to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, who him, you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Celebrating the feast of Pope St. Pius, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the power of this heavenly table, we may be made constant in the faith and be of one accord in your love. Through Christ our Lord. It won't be long. <laughs> well, dear Bishop McKnight, thank you for uh, coming over to Moberly to celebrate with us our 150 plus one, right? Uh, yeah, plus one. <laughs> and also the feast of our patron St. Pius X, so it's a big celebration. Well, of course, the plan was to have a great celebration last year. Because of COVID, we could not do that. And then we thought of having something better this year. Because of COVID, we could not do that. So I hope to do it next year or in 2025, 2045, <laughs> 2070, whenever that is possible. So just wait for that. Well, I thank Bishop McKnight to appoint me in a parish named after St. Pius X. Because in my diocese, I belong to a diocesan society called Missionaries of St. Pius X. So, yeah, so I, we celebrate 21st as a big feast for the last uh, 35 years. So, you know, and of course, uh, St. Pius X is the founder, uh, he's the one who uh, made our diocese in 1911. So, that's why he became uh, the second patron of our diocese back in India. So, it's a big thing for me to be in St. Pius X. So, uh, thank you for that. Well, that's it. I have a few other things. So we have, we have been in our school uh, this Monday. So, as I told the teachers the other day, school is an extension of the parish. The parish, the church goes to school. So, you know, just we work together, we pray together, and also we are uh, we are already we already started the stewardship uh, uh, model on July first. So, I'm still understanding it. No, Bishop knows it because. Okay, he will teach me better. So, be part of it. Be active in the parish. Again, I said, school and parish, we all are part of one body of Christ. We work together. And thanks to the wonderful choir for singing all that uh, great song. Thanks to Father Brad Berhos, he's a new priest of the diocese, MC. Thank you so much for coming over here. Well, a lot of people worked hard to make this day possible. Thank you. Well, I'm not going to name one or the other, but for all of you, thank you very much. And thank you for coming to this wonderful celebration as well. And I would just add my thanks to the Knights of Columbus who are here. And thank you, Father Joby, for saying yes to coming to serve as a missionary in our land. And I, too, want to add thanks to the choir. The ladies tonight are veritable uh, sirens of St. Cecilia. Very beautiful singing and all for the praise and glory of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down May the God of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love, Amen. so that on this life's journey you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying your lives with the Lord. Thank you. Thanks to God.
Now let us pray the prayer of St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us now. Be our protection. 